sometimes we use the the like the veil of joking to like just play around and this isn't serious mm-hmm. so the stakes are low and then i realized like damn this is probably the hardest song i've ever made so i need to quit playing with myself you think lyricists would uh, be a little better with the vocabulary <laughs> i don't know either bro i'm lost yo what's going on everybody this is sav 10 anton k hella and this is an inside look with k hella what up appreciate what's y'all up? having me appreciate man you, how's it bro? going man. what's up look cypher how we feeling Hella good, Likewise. hella good. Your cipher was today. crazy. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Yeah, um, you know, there's there's a few artists that have come in the building that, like, I've met before, right? And then so you and I, we've we've kind of just talked through through the phone, right? Through yeah. messages and then a uh, little FaceTime action. Yeah, it's crazy because we, I'm pretty sure we've probably been either in the same place or like just missed each other with like the Freestyle Fridays and stuff, but we just never actually met. Just yeah. all virtual. But honestly, I work a phone job 40 hours a week. And with COVID, like, my brain doesn't really differentiate anymore. Like, if I talk to you for more than five minutes, I just feel like I know you at this point. You know yeah. I, mean? I think I'm the same way. Like, um, I was very comfortable meeting, like, even KK. And he's one of the artists that we literally didn't have any um like connections with. Connections or, you know, what's that degrees of separation? Is, yeah, that's yeah, what I was yeah. looking for, Um, you know, at all. So when he was in the building, it felt like I knew him, you know. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and same, same for you. Like, you know, our our phone call was hella good, and and I appreciate you just just being you, bro. Hell You're yeah. dope. Likewise, man. I feel like cool people attract cool people. Like hey. uh, the cool thing about the music scene with rap is like the longer you stay in it. I've been rapping for so long now. It's like the only thing that ages me. But the longer you're in it, I just feel like you end up meeting genuine people because that's mm. all that sticks around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like most people burn out and just go do other stuff, which is natural. That's life. Yeah. But yeah, man, a lot of cool people in the rap scene mm. in Sacramento, for sure. It's like there's a lot of people that want to do this shit for like money or something. And it's like, no, nah, you have to have like that burn and desire for hip hop to even spend, you know, all this time. Yeah, dude. Know? And that's what's so crazy, too, is like, you know, you're now you're an adult, whereas you used to be this kid who loved rap or what. That's my case, at least. And now it's like, how do I find time to even put as much work in as it takes to really go ham? But I think it's at least it's worth acknowledging quick pivot. The reason we're here is because you because he only knows me through you. So shout out to mm. you as well. The Pre- homie. Appreciate you. And oh, yeah. it would this none of this would happen without him. So it's kind of like, a, Dope. you know, yeah, I don't know what the word is. I feel like there's a word for this, but I don't know. You think lyricists would uh, be a little better with the vocabulary? <laughs> I don't know either, bro. I'm lost. There is a word for it, but I can't think of it right now. You know, I think um, I I appreciate what you guys are saying absolutely, and I want to add one more party to this mix of this. Probably wouldn't have happened unless we met the folks at CSSB yep, Facts, for sure. Joran, yep, I wouldn't. And all the homies yeah. over there. I think yeah. um, you know, Joran is younger than me, but I still constantly am able to learn from everyone including and especially Josh Joran. Uh, that's my dog. Since day one, he was just like, how can I help? You Facts. know, I was like, well, uh, make beats. Yeah, yeah. And then a month later, I'm in the studio with him three times, and we push out a little EP this year. And yeah. then after that, was like, yo, I got an idea for a cypher. Have you ever heard of Team Backpack? He was like, of course I heard of Team Backpack. And what I didn't know is that they started a cypher, and you were on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your verse was incredible. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, that's uh, yeah. It, it was a tough one to follow because I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. That's probably some of my best work. So I'm just <laughs> like, I, I was extra nervous for this one because I was like, even if I do good, I, uh, it's gonna be yeah. tough, man. But yeah, appreciate that. that Jordan's the homie for sure. That's what like caught my because I saw that one and I was like, God damn! Like, and I think I sent it to you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it was a combination of us trying to figure out like you know how to stand out, how to be different, and uh, from the other ciphers that are happening in Sacramento and Bay Area, right? Like, we're not the only ones out here, but I, I was just trying to stay true to hip hop. So for sure, when I when I heard your single, I saw the video of, through, on Instagram. You were sitting on the rooftop of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We talked about that off camera. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's talk about that single. Yeah. So that was technically I didn't actually release that one as a single. We released some way somehow EP, and that was the title record off of it. And uh, it was basically like a stack of records that I made with my boy John Wild over the course of like mm. a year 
uh, dope guitarist, singer, producer, homie, and we yeah. pretty much just hunkered down, made a bunch of records, and then those were the ones that stood out. And so we used that EP as a way to just tie a ribbon on all the stuff we made. Yeah. But yeah, basically it all came together because like I grew up in a mobile home out in Wilton, which is a suburb of Elk Grove, which is a suburb of Sacramento. <laughs> so, uh, or not even a suburb. Wilton's like the rural area way out there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like I think, you know, as you get older, there's a certain appreciation of where you came from. And I realized like I never really used that as you, you know, for me, it's like the music is obviously a, a reflection of who you are. And when I was younger, it was always trying to fabricate something like it being more selective of my image. So for this one, I was like, I just need to bring it back to where it all started. And it felt mm. hella natural. And naturally, that's where people started reaching out to me. So I was like, OK, this was a good mm. look. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Can we talk about the music video for Kevin? Hell yeah. The first time I heard it, I ran it back five, six times in a row. No cap at all. Um, I sent it to everybody I could, um, everybody I thought that would appreciate the value in the production, in the concept, everything that you ran. That is my favorite song from you. Thank you. Um, please talk about it. Yeah, so I'll give like a quick little rundown. Basically, I found this sample on Splice that was really saying give it, but I'm like, it sounds like Kevin. Yeah. And then I sat on it in a Dropbox for hella long. And then one day I sent it to John and he was like, made this slapper beat in like two minutes. And then I sat on it again for like six months. And one day we were just freestyling. And the whole point of that song was just to say the most outrageous shit. Like I have like a jacking off bar and just <laughs> fucking the world. Like I'm going nuts. And then we like came up with this Kevin chant. And then we ended up hiring a, a choir on Fiverr to sing the chorus. And I'm like, bro, this is the goofiest, funniest thing. I'm never putting this out. Ha ha. Like, you know, sometimes we use the, the like, the veil of joking to like just play around and this isn't serious mm -hmm. so the stakes are low and then yeah. i realized like damn this is probably the hardest song i've ever made so i need to quit playing with myself and then naturally kevin we were like what's the most marketable thing home alone and we just made the video based off that yeah. and yeah. everything just clicked i immediately picked up all the references that you got the house you got no. Different, different looks, different angles. Yeah, the um, bathroom with the towel on the head, the yes. shaving cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. For and sure. then you had the the scene, the food scene where like where Kevin's going yeah. crazy at the ice cream. And yep. Good work, bro. I wow. ate a lot of whipped cream for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and ice cream. We we're, we were talking about, or you were talking about with uh, some of the other artists, how like you really care about how your Instagram looks, and some people might not care, but I I am really a fan on like how your Instagram. You Thank know, people you. talk about like their profile grids and like you know cleaning it up and like yours is like yours looks really good and thank like really you crisp. yeah yeah i appreciate it i'm trying to care about it a little less not so much sacrificing the aesthetic but i feel like i've locked it in now for so long where i'm like i need to find a way to keep this consistent and more saturated because the problem is like I'm just not out enough taking good pictures and fitting my aesthetic to where I can only post so often if I want to uphold that. So I appreciate that for sure because yeah. I do care almost sometimes to my own detriment where I'm like, yeah. I need to stop caring yeah. for sure. No, nah, see, and like we're talking about like the outfits, we're talking about our fits and like I feel like it was like, yo, I don't have enough fits like because Freestyle Friday was every week. I was like, I don't have enough fits to maintain this Dude, shit. Dude, yeah, I some need people chill. come in every week with a <laughs> yeah. new fit. I'm like, bro, I got a couple pairs of shirts and like yeah. three pairs of jeans, but I'm cooked. <laughs> yeah. All right, this is our favorite question for the interview. Let's go. We'll run a little bit of promo. Yes, sir. All right, so K Hella, please name your top five rappers, dead or alive, in no particular order. Bet, I'm gonna give you a direct answer and then the preface after for the purpose of clipping. <laughs> So I don't have a, a order, but it's going to be pretty similar because I think a lot of us here are hip hop heads. So like Nas was the first artist where I listened to everything in their discography and was like, damn, this God. is it for me. Multi-syllable rhyme scheme, the dopest voice, Nas. So maybe he's even number one. Maybe I'll give him an order. Lil Wayne, for me, I just feel like is the perfect example of someone who can bar out, make meaningful shit, do whatever he wants, make it a hit. Like, bro, dope, versatile, multi-generational artist. I love Lil Wayne. I used to always say Big L, but I mm. wish he had a deeper, you know, just, yeah. discography, just, got cut yeah. short. Yeah. Um, Black Thought, ironically, we talked about him earlier. He's somebody that I've studied so, like, bro, this dude is a rap god. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And then number five, it's always been hard. I might even need to look at my phone, bro, real quick. I'm so sorry. I don't mean to be that guy. Wait, do you have this on your notes? I do have it in my notes. <laughs> I had to prep. I had to prep because I have so many answers, bro. Number five, I'm going to go with Freddie Gibbs because okay. his projects with Mad Lib mm. have changed my like perspective mm. of hip hop, bro. Like insane. Yeah. So good. And then he has like that. Yeah, yeah. Just 
just in your face because he started off on like the trap banger style for so long and it wasn't really clicking i mean it was to some degree but then you do a project with mad lib and it's over like and now he has the alchemist projects alfredo yeah crazy yeah i i just saw something where it was like um Alfredo is just alchemists and Freddie Gibbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, had yeah. No I, I didn't realize that till my homie bought a shirt and I was reading the merch like Alfredo. Oh my God, they're <laughs> yeah. geniuses. I didn't yeah, even yeah, know yeah. the whole That's time. That's fire. That's fire. Hell yeah. I, but, I could talk to you for hours. For sure. We could definitely. There's a few natural. that we need to run back later yeah. in life when we have yeah. like full time podcasting oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, careers. Hit me up. I'm um, there. Uh, yeah, we'll have you back on in a heartbeat. Uh, but until then, my guy, um, that's your camera. Uh, please plug anything, everything that you want, and it's all yours. Yes, sir. So it's your boy, K. Hella. I got some music coming out soon, a couple of singles, hopefully working up to a project. I know for sure I'm dropping something in October with my boy, John Wild. This is the first sneak peek. Hell yeah. Uh, I'm doing a show October 5th. I got a bunch of information on it about, on my social media, at Hella himself on all platforms. Run it up. Give it a follow. Check out the Look Cypher episode and the interview. Appreciate y'all. That's what's up. Well done. One take Jake that shit. For yeah, sure. Don't let him know that was eight takes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Incredible stuff, brother. All I right. appreciate Bye. you. Thank am, you. I, am I closing this? Or are you Close it out. Close right. it out. Oh, we'll dab Yo, you up now. this is Anton. This is Sav10. K. Hella. Hey, and this is the inside look. It's your boy, K. Hella. Thank you for checking out the interview. Now go check out the verse. My homies Mage and Mighty Bush killed it, as well as myself. Run it up.